There have been a couple of whitebark pine in the Canadian Rockies that have been aged around a thousand years old. I mean, these trees have seen such incredible change in the world since they were seedlings like the ones we're planting. All of mountain parks, so that's Waterton, Revelstoke Glacier, Kootenai, Yoho, Banff, and Jasper, we all work together. We're, we're relying on each other, trying to recover whitebark pine and limber pine together. Whitebark pine is a pioneering species, and so it moves in and it creates often these little tree islands, and other species are able to move in after it. My favorite thing about white bark pine, the, the fact that nutcrackers are almost exclusively responsible for allowing them to regenerate. I love that they just grow in these really um, rough, exposed areas and that they're so resilient and um, they just live for hundreds of years. Once we found a limber pine that was just growing straight into a cliff, like it's surviving and, and thriving. These trees have an absolutely crucial role in both the plant communities and the animal communities, the soil communities, um, probably more communities than we understand right now. <laughs> the Clark's Nutcracker and the white bark pine have a really important relationship called, it's called a mutualism, really rare in nature, where both species depend on each other for their survival. The cones will not open on their own. The nutcracker has a specialized beak to be able to open the cones and then it will fly off to different parts of the forest where it will deposit seeds and then months later they will fly back, find that exact spot and dig out the seeds and eat them. And it's only seeds that they don't eat that become white bark pine seedlings. They evolved together, these two species, over tens of thousands of years. So you can see that it's kind of spindle shaped. There's a lot of swelling, coarse bark, and you can see some of the inactive rust oozing out. And then this section of the branch is all dead. These trees did not evolve with white pine blister rust, and that's what's really important about why this caused this tree to become endangered. This disease came in in the early 1900s and the tree just doesn't have the traits to be able to fight it off. So we worry about these big ghost forests. If there are ghost forests, will there not be enough white bark pine to attract nutcrackers? And if there's no nutcracker, there's no future. We climb the tree in the early summer. We put cages on the cones. The cones mature, but they don't get eaten by birds or squirrels. And we climb back up late September, pick the cones, and then the cones dry. And then we extract the seeds from the cones. And we send those seeds to a nursery. And then the nursery spends two years growing these guys. We want to plant enough trees at a high enough density that in 80 years we will have a forest of cone producing trees that will attract Clark's nutcrackers back. And that they, the, these birds will continue to allow this, these stands to persist. And so that's how we will create these sort of self-sustaining recovered white bark pine stands. So there's a lot of hope involved in 
keeping a really positive attitude about what we're doing. The fact that none of us here will be alive to know whether this was successful.